What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I'll be doing an update on the Russia and Ukraine conflict that has been unfolding over the last few days. This is a pretty important video, obviously, because this is real-world events that are taking place. This is stuff that's killing people actively. And I feel it and deem it very important that I get this right, that I get information correct. So I will be linking all of my sources for this video down below, along with the primary source that I'm getting all of my other sources and information from right now. Along with a live interactive map and updated website for you guys to look at if you're interested at finding out any new information that's breaking about this situation beyond the video. As you guys know... This this is a real world situation, which means that as it's unfolding, information is subject to change. New information will also be arising as it happens. And I will be able, of course, to update you guys on any live information while I'm recording this video. But after I stop recording for this, New information is going to basically be updated through my Twitter page, at sub to optimus And on top of that, it will be updated by the sources that I've linked as well. These are reputable sources. These are people who have years worth of experience in the news industry. I will also be linking sources, and the sources that I'll direct you to will be linking to sources from multiple different countries. This is not just Americanized news by any stretch of the imagination. So first and foremost, a virtual meeting did take place between NATO members on early Friday regarding the deployment of units from the NATO response force throughout NATO allied nations in Europe. This would be the first time that any form of NATO response force would be used in any form of defensive measure. To clarify, this does not guarantee any sort of NATO involvement in Ukraine, meaning of course like American or any other nation's troops on the ground, and it does not confirm any sort of direct conflict with Russia. This is more or less to just bolster support for NATO allies in the area, at least as of what we know right now. NATO is acting purely defensively in this situation beyond uh, just, you know, of course, giving supplies and whatnot to the Ukrainians. This is coming from Terry Schultz at DW News. And on top of all of that, President Zelensky of Ukraine has called on NATO to move air power near the skies of Ukraine and to also place NATO troops within Kiev, saying, quote, give us shelter from the sky and save Ukrainian lives. He also then called for more damaging action from the West, including more restrictive sanctions against the Russian economy. Also, according to President Zelensky, he had a conversation with United States President Joe Biden in which they discussed a few different things, including strengthening sanctions against Russia to damage and cripple their economy more, also providing concrete defensive assistance, most likely by giving the Ukrainians some sort of weapons, defensive systems, ammunition, things like that, and also the potential for an anti-war coalition have been discussed between the two. He then also shared heavy support for the American support of Ukraine during this entire crisis. If you didn't know, sanctions have been put into place by multiple world powers, including the United States, the EU, uh, n I think New Zealand and Australia, Japan. I've been able to, uh, I haven't been able to confirm those yet, but those have been rumored at least. And this has spelled some pretty bad news for the Russian economy. In fact, the Russian ruble, which is the official Russian currency, actually plummeted to all-time lows yesterday after the invasion of Ukraine. As well, yesterday, Russian stocks were down about 33% in reaction to the news of invasion and to also brace for potential impact of Western sanctions. Analysts have predicted that Russia will not be able to sustain their economic deposits that they spent years saving up on. If you did not know, after the invasion and annexation of Crimea by the Russians in 2014, Western sanctions have come into play as a defensive measure from the West, essentially, for years now, which has been a reason that the Russians have been stocking up on gold deposits and other methods in order to save themselves up a little bit of money in depository just in case any sort of harsher sanctions were to come along. Obviously, they are. But experts do not believe that Russia will be able to hang on to these deposits for the entirety of this situation. They believe that long-term Russia will end up depleting these and the damage to the Russian economy could be significant. Now, when it comes back to the invasion of Ukraine itself, Russia has claimed control over the ghost city of Pripyat and the Chernobyl power plant remains, which is along one of the shortest routes to Kiev from Belarus, which is also an important strategic move, as claiming the territories and the areas around it would give the Russians an easier method of basically pushing further into Ukraine and encircling the capital of Kiev, which intends to be uh, basically the way that they will push their way into the Ukrainian capital. They have expressed interest in arresting or detaining many Ukrainian officials and potentially even setting up some sort of puppet government is what people are currently believing will happen. They went on to claim that they do not believe 
believe that they can recognize a democratic government in Ukraine right now, which only kind of adds fuel to the fire in the beliefs that President Zelensky and the people around him are the number one targets of the Russian military as of right now. Speaking of the city of Kiev, the capital city of Kiev is officially on the defensive, according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. Uh, reports of fighting between Ukraine and Russia within the city have intensified overnight, including uh, basically reports of gunfire between Russians and Ukrainians in the center of the city, the north, the northeast, and the eastern sectors of the city. It's a very dangerous and serious situation unfolding in the capital right now, but the Ukrainian military is currently on the defensive there. They are trying to prevent any sort of capture of the city, as obviously a capture of the capital city of Kiev could spell disaster for the Ukrainian defense movement. The Ministry of Defense of Ukraine did claim, though, that Russian troops that had infiltrated Kiev overnight in the northern outskirts had been, quote, neutralized. The reports of gunfire that have been taking place in the area were expected, and Ukrainians have been asked to not film Ukrainian soldiers and equipment on the defense in Kiev, as Russia claims they've secured a western interest into the capital city, uh, basically by capturing a major highway route that they could potentially use as an entrance. On top of all of this, the Russians have been repeatedly accused of targeting civilian locations throughout Ukraine after strictly promising that they would be only targeting and striking military-specific targets. A hospital in Melitopol was struck by the Russian army. Residential buildings throughout multiple cities have been rumored to be hit, along with footage of apartment complexes being struck by munitions and the waste of munitions. Residential buildings have also been set on fire, and civilian vehicles have been ran over with tanks, including a situation in Kiev where a Russian tank actually ran over a vehicle with a civilian inside of it. Now, of course, thankfully, the civilian was successfully saved and did survive, though civilians were also still reported to be using vehicles and other objects as roadblocks of sorts against Russian tanks and armored vehicles movements to basically prevent further invasion tactics from being successful. Russia has claimed that they have successfully captured Hostomel Airport mere miles from the capital city of Kiev and along a path that Russia has claimed is their western entrance into the city. The Nuclear Regulation Service of Ukraine claims that available data has been showing a noticeable increase in levels of radiation from the Chernobyl exclusion zone. This has continued to be one of the main stories of this invasion so far is the Russians' involvement near the area, the fight that has taken place for it, and the capture. People are afraid that the Russians will be using the basically lethal amounts of radiation in the area that could be spread over Ukraine in order to use as some sort of pawn or chip in negotiations. But in reality, there's a very strategic reason that this has been captured, even though that unfortunately we're now noticing increases in levels of radiation, and that's because it's in a strategic area. If the Russians get a chokehold there, it makes it easier for them to move on that western front and also to encircle the city of Kiev and also push their way into other major cities in that region. Russia also claims that they are laying siege to the city of Chernihiv, which is located relatively close to the capital city of Kiev. As of right now, according to my source Live AU map, which is linked below, there appears to be an encirclement of Russian gunfire around the city as well as bombings and shellings within the city. However, it is not confirmed whether or not that it has been captured by the Russians, but there are multiple streaks of areas from the Belarusian border that basically Russian soldiers have been using to march toward the city. On top of all of this, the United States military is preparing assembly areas on the border of Ukraine and Poland for Ukrainian evacuees. According to sources, as of right now, at least 100,000 Ukrainian citizens have been temporarily displaced from their homes due to the conflict, and a lot of them are going to be seeking refuge refuge in the neighboring countries, including Poland. Many nations are trying to get involved in the, uh, the, basically the race to save these refugees and civilians and allow them access to their countries so that they can seek asylum with their families. And then another pretty big global development in this entire thing, Chinese leader Xi Jinping and President Vladimir Putin of Russia spoke on the phone regarding the Russian invasion of Ukraine. China notably publicly shied away from calling the invasion of Ukraine an invasion. Sources suggest that the reason they do this is so that later they can use this as a justification to potentially invade Taiwan. This is not confirmed at any sort right now, but there are confirmed reports that Taiwan airspace was violated by Chinese jets over the last 24, 48 hours. This does not mean an invasion is imminent, and it does not mean that World War III is imminent, but it is definitely something to note. And Ergodon, the leader of Turkey, actually accused NATO and the European Union of failing to act regarding the situation in Ukraine. Circling back around, though, Turkey, after accusing 
accusing NATO of all of this, though. Uh, Ukraine successfully shot down a Russian plane in the Cherkasy region. Uh, the police and the military in the area were looking for the pilot who did safely eject from the aircraft, as well as footage of dead Russian soldiers and what appeared to be a neutralized tank or armored vehicle were also shared from the Oleski area. This was being shared on Twitter by Russian and Ukrainian forces, primarily Ukrainian sources, though. When it comes to death tolls and the amount of vehicles that have been destroyed, we have three sets of tolls in order to report here. One from Ukraine, one from Russia, and one from the United Kingdom. First, we'll start with the Russians. They have yet to claim any direct deaths by Ukrainians in gunfight or conflict, but they have claimed that two civilian ships were struck and that they had crashed one Su-25 aircraft and then another one AN-26 crash that had killed all of the Russians aboard. The Russians claimed that Ukraine's air capabilities and their air defenses had been neutralized with 14 Ukrainians surrendering. The Russians also went on to claim they had downed four Ukrainian aircraft and also had downed a Ukrainian helicopter and also had destroyed four Ukrainian drones. In terms of what the Ukrainians are claiming, they have claimed that they have killed upwards of 2,800 Russian soldiers during this, four of them captured as prisoners of war, 80 or so tanks have potentially been destroyed according to the Ukrainians, along with 516 Russian armor vehicles destroyed by the Ukrainians, 10 aircraft downed by the Ukrainians, and 7 helicopters from the Russians downed by the Ukrainians. They also have claimed that 137 Ukrainians in total have been killed, along with 316 of them being wounded. One of the most popular stories that's come up during this entire thing is regarding an aircraft pilot, a jet pilot that is, for the Ukrainian Air Force that has been nicknamed the Ghost of Kiev. This is unconfirmed, but there are reports that one single aircraft from Ukraine's armored forces is responsible for downing upwards of six Russian jets in one-to-one -one combats and dogfights in air, potentially making a Ukrainian pilot the first ace pilot of the 21st century and becoming a popular story of the Ukrainian defense of the Russian invasion. The Ghost of Kiev has gained international popularity so far, with footage of the plane flying around in the sky constantly airing across TikTok, Twitter, and other sources. The United Kingdom claims that 450 Russian soldiers have been killed and that 137 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed. Unfortunately, this is not the end of the news reporting here. Russia has actually made threats against another country in Europe as of just a few minutes ago. Finland announced through their prime minister that the debate, quote unquote, around them joining NATO would change after the invasion of Ukraine. Finland obviously has noticed that just staying out of it is not really an option anymore. Anymore. You know, it's not an option when you have Russia invading countries like this, and they've basically insinuated that they will be considering joining NATO in order to get defense from the alliance. Russia did respond through one of its Twitter channels, actually threatening, quote, serious military and political repercussions against Finland if they were to join NATO. Obviously, any sort of conflict between Russia and Finland in which Finland would be in NATO would mean that other countries, including Germany, France, the United Kingdom, and the United States, would then be getting involved militarily. This would be dangerous dangerous for Russia as they already have their hands full so far with the Ukrainian invasion, so I do not foresee that happening. Reports just came in as of me recording this audio that a photo has been released showing a burnt armored vehicle that was probably BMD near the town of Bucha, which is in the Kiev region. There is an identification mark clearly visible in the photo with a V, which is actually the same insignia that multiple Russian forces have been using as they've attacked from Belarus. So everything is lining up here to insinuate that a Russian vehicle was destroyed and was also now engulfed into flames and burned up. And as of 31 minutes ago, the Pentagon is reporting that Russian troops have slowed down their pace of invasion so far. The Russians have supposedly only used about one third of their entire forces that they've built up on the Ukrainian border throughout the invasion so far. And the Russians actually announced that they would be willing to establish talks with Ukraine and negotiate. Europe has also struck Russia pretty hard when it comes to diplomatic things. Uh, 30 minutes ago, the Russian Grand Prix had been canceled. The Football Champions League final has been moved out of Russia and as well of that as that, uh, Russia has been suspended from the Eurovision contest. Russia is also apparently being shunned from the Council of Europe as well. As of right now, these are all of the updates that I have for you guys in this situation. I do not plan on making daily content surrounding this. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me, especially on Twitter, to update you guys with videos. I'm very humbled, honestly, that you guys consider me a trustworthy news source considering this is just a YouTube channel. That is why I'm linking all of the sources to this down below so that you can do any sort of research you'd like for yourself. And with that being said, thank you for watching, and until my next video, guys, this is Optimus updating you on the situation in Ukraine and signing out.